Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool drink carrier, but it also comes with a warning, so watch this. Well, and here's the warning. Uh, this drink tray, if you take this into your favorite coffee shop, uh, you may find, as I have, Almost every time I take it in, people want to know where I purchased it. They want to know where they can get one. They want to know if I'm taking orders for them or if I will build one for them. This is a super popular little item and all it is is a little flat piece of board with a couple of holes in it. It'll hold both sizes of drinks. I've tried it with uh, a lot of different cups. It seems to work fine with all of them that I've tried with or without the, the, the hot sleeve on them. So today I'm going to go through the system of how you make this. They're pretty simple and you can make them as attractive as you want. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to make some blanks and they you want to be about eight or nine inches wide and up to 10 or 12 inches long depending on whether you want to do um, two cups uh, plus a holder or just two cups. Uh, there's lots of different combinations to do this today. I'm just going to do a two cup. The project I'm building today, I'm going to be using this very thin plywood template that I've made in order to make the drink tray. The only thing that's really critical about this template is the whole size needs to be two and three quarters of an inch diameter. And you'll notice that I've got holes, little arrows here, where there's a hole that I can put my awl through so that I can mark the wood underneath. And the distance between those holes on each side is four inches. If you were going to make four hole, four cup holder, it would be four inches side to side and top to bottom. Trim to width, and I cut the end off. You can see that I haven't trimmed the bottom off. That's because um, I can do that later on. It doesn't matter. Now, I've circled where I'm going to be drilling here because if you look carefully, you can see that I do have some holes in there. But because it's spalted wood, it's hard to see the little hole sometimes. So I just put a little circle around there, and that's going to get cut out anyway. Now, I've taken time to align my... Um, drill press jig so that I can drill that hole and then just slide it through and align the next one. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that but I'm going to show you how this is done because there's a technique to this and that is that I'm going to drill partially through the top hole then I'm going to flip it over and continue to drill in the bottom and that way it uh, reduces the amount of tear out that we get. So I'll show you that. that plug out later on. Anyway, there you go. And you can see it's a nice clean cut on both sides. And this is my, this was my face side here. So, all right, let's carry on. In order to etch out the pocket, we need to have a template. The first one I made from a solid piece of MDF. I did that by drilling holes and routing it out on my router. You don't need to do that. There's a much easier, quicker way of doing that. And that is just to cut some strips of wood and cut out four of them and make your own little template like this. You don't need to have rounded corners and then just glue and tack them together. You don't need to use an air nailer if you don't have one. You can tack it together with just little finishing nails. Let it sit to dry and that will work just perfectly as a template to route out your pockets. Okay, so back to my jig here and remember, remember I talked about those two little holes which will be for the indentation. Well those holes, there's one there and one there and I actually drew a fine line just because it, again it's hard to see in here. Now the next thing I need to do is to overlay my jig that I'm going to be using with my router to cut this out. Thank you. 
All right, now hopefully, I'll flip that over and hopefully that will hold on there. Now you don't want to try and lift it because this the 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 tape is is sort of a sideways motion on this. We want to make sure that it's not going to move sideways, and that's good on there. So, all right, so that's good. Now let's get the router over here. Now I've just set my turret and the um, stopper here so that when I plunge, my arm out of the way so you can see when I plunge down it will stop at that depth. Now remember, I have to go through MDF, so I'm going down, um, you know, a, an inch and a inch and a quarter uh, into the wood. In the first pass, I'm just going to get that little bit. Then I'm going to make another second pass, and I'll change that turret to the deeper setting. Can't get it there. There it is there. Um, you can't really see the difference there, but that will make the final pass on it. So let me just go back up and change that. To that and that's what that first pass will be okay I've just plugged my router in I'm ready to start routing and what I'm going to do I'm I have to go around the outside first of all and then I have to take a path I have to go up and down up and down in the middle so it's a bit tedious um, and I won't show it all to you but I'll give you an idea what you have to do to clean out the sander so anyway let's get started Okay, you can see that I've rounded off the edges here. And what I'm going to do, I've just got a, quarter, a small quarter round on there that I'm going to take uh, the edges of this off just to make it a little bit easier to hold on to. And I've checked to make sure that my depth isn't going to interfere with my anti-skid pad down here. So all ready to go. And it's just a quick job. There. And that just softens the edges. You can see what a nice job that does. Now the next is going to be sanding. I'm not going to make you sit through the sanding, but I'm going to take some time, especially in this area here. Actually, it's pretty good. Um, but I'm just going to do a little bit of sanding and we'll be ready to put some finish on that. And for finishing, I'm just going to use my go-to product, which is Osmo. We just put a little bit in a tray. It doesn't use very much at all. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and coat this all and let it sit for a few minutes. I'll probably give it a second coat and you can just see how that Osmo just makes this grain pop on this. So there's the first finish uh, and you can just see what that's going to look like. I'll give one more finish and that'll give just a little bit of a sheen to it. Uh, and that is just stunning. That is just amazing. So, all right, so there's the two trays that we just made. Uh, which one is the more recent one? This is the one here. I have to stop and think about which one is the more recent because they're both from the same wood. But while these were drying, I went ahead and I made a couple more just so you can see some other variations. In both of these cases, the wood was too small. This vaulted wood was too small. In this case, this, the maple was too small. So I've edged on the outside with some walnut. In this side, I put a couple of walnut strips in the middle just to make that wood a little bit bigger. Just another variation of what you can do. And you know, if you don't have a router to cut these pockets out, you could just do something like this. Put some little strips of wood in there, uh, just glue and tack them would be just fine. Because the whole purpose of this is if you're carrying snacks, uh, 
uh, you don't want them to slip out and just that little bit of an indentation just helps keep everything secure from sliding off of what would be a, otherwise a flat board. Well, that concludes my video for today, making the drink tray complete with pocket for putting snacks in, and it means that everything is easily and safely transportable. I used spalted wood for mine, and for me, I went out, was able to go out into the forest and actually find my own spalted wood. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I'm posting it right here. You can go and have a look at it. If you have already seen it, you might want to go back and have a look at it anyway, because it makes it that much more meaningful when you can see some of the things that you can do with this wood because you don't often get large quantities of it. Uh, smaller quantities, it's perfect for this kind of thing. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.